Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Sitting on a park bench. Nobody knows the rest of the words of that song, except for the word Aqualung, because it's the name of the song, right? It's the only thing that anyone knows from that song. Yeah. We're in Columbus, Ohio, Friday night, Sad Boy Fall. Sad Boy Fall, yeah. That Which is uh, the follow-up to what? That is the follow-up to Hot Girl Summer, right. and now we're two sad boys. We're in the most beautiful, picturesque place in Columbus, Ohio. There is currently four different couples getting wedding photos taken. Yeah. Wedding photos taken. Yeah. They're wedding all, photos. It's they all, can hear me. That's why I keep saying It's that. all straight people, too, which is kind of weird. Surprised. I expected to see two homosexual males. This is kind of a gay area of town, right? Yes. This is. This so is, we're... We're in the short north. Are, do gay people like go to nicer places than this to get their wedding photos done? I, I don't know. Or are they not into the so this whole shit? They, I don't no, know. They're into this whole shit. You would think um, so, right? It's artsy and shit. It's nice. This is picturesque fall right here. Yeah. This, this is like a movie. Well, and we thought we would do a live show saying the most disgusting things we could possibly think of in the middle of all this happiness. Right. You were talking about fucking a rabbit earlier. No, 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 nope. I wasn't talking about that. I'm pretty sure our producer, Alec, brought up rabbits okay. or something, and I may have mentioned about fucking a rabbit. Like, I'm not trying to fuck a rabbit. He goes, how do you even fuck a rabbit? I said, you have to use duct tape. You have to wrap it in duct tape first because it'll explode otherwise. <laughs> Everybody knows that. That's just fucking physics, dude. I mean, it's not like, again, just for the record, I'm not trying to fuck a rabbit. I'm not saying you are. I'm not saying you're not. What but, I'm saying is, I, I th- as soon as you said it, I thought, I thought about you trying. Because nobody says, hey, man, you're going to have to duct tape it together. You don't know, like, procedures for shit you've never done before? You never thought about, well, how would I do this weird thing or that weird thing? I thought of a bigger rabbit. I think you immediately went small, which is very Epstein of you. Well, I thought of an elderly, bigger, no, older rabbit. Wait, an elderly? Why would a rabbit be bigger when it's elderly? That doesn't make any sense. Because it gains weight. No, that's not how it works. Yes. No, they, they wither and die. No, they yeah. get they get real fat. And Maybe just... rabbit from uh, Winnie the Pooh, because I always thought that that was like an I don't know I couldn't tell. I always tried to assign genders to the characters. To, to the char- like I feel like Piglet was probably a trans transsexual. <laughs> <laughs> Based on what? I don't know. I just got that feeling, you know, <laughs> that Piglet was a trans. Yeah, man, I never got that feeling as a child. <laughs> Um, if so, I would have told my parents and gotten the switch immediately, and they would have done it because I was seven and I knew what I was doing with my body at that point. I was a big Tigger fan back in the day. Cause what, I, what was that? Tigger with a okay. T. Okay. Just and making I feel, sure that's a hard T on there. I feel like cold he, outside. It is cold, yeah. I feel like he uh, he was super excited about things. Like He was on meth. And I, <laughs> it, it really made me think that the author of uh, Winnie the Pooh may have been on a lot of drugs. Who, who wrote that? Was it B. Arthur? I think it was B. Arthur, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember uh, exactly, but so Donkey seems like he's a heroin addict, right? The Donkey, Eeyore. Easily, yeah. And then Piglet is like fucking a tranny. He's strung out. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. then and then uh, Tigger is obviously on meth or some shit. Yeah. Winnie the Pooh is some fat dummy that's addicted to sugar, so he's like an American. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who are the other characters? Christopher Robin's a little bitch. Uh, he's gay. Yeah, for sure. They they came out and said he was a gay man, right? I every all the characters get assigned gayness now. Like, oh, by the way, your childhood hero was gay. Like, no, just shut the fuck up. Dude. Yeah, we don't we don't dislike gay people. You can just sh- stop with all this now. Yeah, I, the only thing I didn't like about him, whether he was gay or not, was he didn't have any elastic in his socks, and that creeps me out. Whenever I saw a boy without elastic in his socks, and they were just kind of lopy like that. Yeah, freak me the fuck out. And he wore shorts a lot too, which I think you know. I mean, that's, very short. That's fine, but they were they were a little too short. They were like uh, it was almost like he was asking for it. <laughs> I don't know if we could go that far. Well, we can because you know here we are in the middle of a beautiful park. People are getting wedding photos taken. They are, yeah. And There's since, a lot of squirrels here since too. we're assigning sexuality to uh, you know all our childhood figures. Yeah, you know I don't know how old Christopher Robbins was. I th- he must have been like seven or eight, right? No, older than that. Let's see, it was probably 19, right? No, no. No, back no. in the day. When's, when did you, did you ever have an imaginary friend? No. Because I didn't either. I, I, I never had one. Here's the thing. I was an only child, though. And so what I would do is uh, play basketball and games against myself. Oh, know? yeah, I did that, too, yeah. Against my, my middle name and my last name. Those were two other people. Yep. And then I would see if Ross could beat Michael or Patterson. 
And that's probably fucked up. No, I did that. Now you that ha- I'm saying to. it out loud. It's the first time I've said that out loud in my entire life. You have to. I used to uh, stand out in my backyard and throw rocks up in the air and hit them towards the fence. And I would keep track of an entire nine-inning baseball game. Right. That now that that's on some serial killer shit. Like, yeah, that, that's definitely something a serial killer. Yeah, well, would do. I, but the other <laughs> the other things I did in my backyard was sit on the back porch with a pellet gun and try to shoot birds in the eye. Like that was my goal to shoot it right through the eye. Okay, so I would kill like thirty birds on your then, back porch. Yeah, that was in South but, Carolina though. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. birds. I mean, they're not real. No, no, they're imaginary. It doesn't yeah. matter, matter, right? Uh, uh, how many times you get it through the eye? I don't know. Probably a dozen, right through the eye. That's not bad. No. Maybe that helps you become the man you are today. Did you Probably. ever think about that? Just all the murder. Yeah. Just filled, filled with rage and murder, dude. Yeah. What, did your parents ever find that out? No. What would you do with the birds? Did you hide them? Did you hide those fucking dead birds? I, bar- I buried them, yeah. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. I also used to throw frogs up in the air and hit them with a metal baseball bat. Alive or dead? Alive. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what happens to the bodies? I know, I know I'm painting the serial killer picture here, but I'm not a serial killer. The, everything you're saying... Because now I'm expecting you to, well, then I would go home and I would uh, use my own feces and draw on the walls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I didn't think of uh, an animal that small as a sentient creature, really. Like, a bird is a bird, man. They don't know shit. Ah, they do and they don't. Would you kill a parrot? No, they're smarter. Like, it's <laughs> it's seriously the level of intelligence that affects me. Of, of what that animal is? Yeah. So w- what's the highest, a monkey? Would you fucking kill a monkey with a baseball A dolphin, bat? probably. It's the highest, but no, I wouldn't kill a monkey or a dolphin or a dog. I mean, well, I've killed a bunch of dogs, but yeah, uh, in war, not not for not fun, life, not yeah. for fun or anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I like animals though. Okay, I'm look. I'm seeing what your level is. Yeah, and what animals you'd murder. Yeah, man. Not squirrel. I like squirrels too. Although I did accidentally, so I was trying to capture a squirrel because I thought they were f- cute. I wanted to have one for a pet. Yeah. He was like fucking 10 years old maybe. And I reached out and I cornered one and I grabbed him, but his like his body slipped through my hand and I just grabbed his tail and I tried to pick him up and ripped his fucking tail off. Like it just Jesus came, it, Christ. No, no, no. It, it like I was a child. I was like 8 years old or some shit. And it, and I just I just tried to grab it and his tail completely came off. I'm like, "Holy shit, is that supposed to happen?" Because I didn't know. The fuck do you know at <laughs> 8 years old? I'm like, "Hey, the fucking thing's tail came off." And my parents are like, "Get the fuck out of here with that thing." Was it bleeding? No. Really? So you can just rip the tail off? And I that's guess. It. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it was a weird. Maybe it was a fucking uh, a drone or something. That's crazy, man. Creepy. Yeah, it's a little weird. Creepy. Either way, it's a gorgeous fall day here. Again, we're just gonna say the worst shit that we can possibly come up with today because it's Friday night, uh, Friday <coughs> afternoon, dayish. Had a couple mules in my body already. Not like a drug mule, but just uh, some alcoholic beverages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vodka. Ginger, uh, and, and ginger beer. We're in we're in Columbus, Ohio again. So Champs Restaurant was the, is the choice here. Uh, loves Champs. Anywhere with a big menu usually frightens me. Yeah, because you if you you can really only do a few things well. Yeah, but, but they they, they but do Champs right. does does a lot of things well. I don't like the way this squirrel's looking at me over here. Well, he heard my story. Now he's fucking pissed off. Look at him. He's right there. Mark him. Throw the camera on him, Alec. Look, you get that squirrel right there. Like, he's seriously getting super close to us now. He's like, I heard what you did to my cousin, bitch. Well, you're still a squirrel. I'll fucking stomp on you, (laughs) asshole. I don't know why I'm having this weird exchange with a squirrel who doesn't even know that I'm a creature. He's just, like, trying to get food or something. It's Friday. Who fucking cares? Yeah. Uh, Big menus that I dislike, by the way. Cheesecake Factory. I just had a conversation about that this afternoon. I hate the fucking Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. I think I'm the only one who hates the Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. They don't do anything well. I feel like all of it is is very mediocre. Whereas Champs, I feel the opposite. You? I get my eyes on this squirrel right now. Wow. It's like, look at it. Turn around and look at it. It's right Ah. there. It's going to get you. Anyways, uh, yeah, Cheesecake Factory sucks. Actually, I heard this morning they have a new, so they have their whole fucking uh, uh, Tolstoy menu, which is 6,000 pages. Then they have a, <laughs> then they have a new menu <laughs> that's just the healthy options of everything. Yeah. It's a whole separate fucking menu now. Like, get fucked. Oh, really? Yeah, there's no way you can be good at that many things. You can't. Like, it all has to be frozen. You can't, anybody that's worked in the restaurant industry or watched any of the litany of fucking cooking shows now knows that to do, like, a nighttime like a dinner service yeah. at a restaurant, you, you have to prep all the fucking fresh ingredients, and you can only make those things that night. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like hey, everything at Cheesecake look, Factory. Look over your shoulder here. There's a, there's a couple getting wedding photos. They're about to throw leaves in the air. Shoot it, Alec. Get, 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 get a shot of that. We're going we're gonna to put this up on YouTube. Um, 
this is what happens, dude, when you take wedding photos. They make you do like the things that you don't want to do in this life. And Jesse, stop looking at him. Uh, come on, you're giving it away. You're giving it away. We're not supposed to be looking at them throwing the leaves. They're about to throw the leaves. Let them throw the leaves, Jesse. Let them throw the leaves. Look at that. Look at that. There's also somebody doing aggressive push ups over here. So, yeah, well, I don't mind what is, that. What oh is my he? God, that guy's, that guy's fucking the ground yeah. right now. Yeah. Wow, this is really weird. So, <laughs> oh man, here's, here's the thing: whenever I see these family what? photos or wedding photos, yeah. this is a god's honest truth. I think about how <laughs> fucking miserable the guy is every single time. Yeah, we put up with a lot. I know you guys like, uh, you know, have kids for us and raise them and shit. Yeah, but uh, having to stand outside for 45 minutes to get pictures taken is way worse than that. Like, all you do is make a baby with your body, carry it around for nine months. Shit it out and then feed it from your body for another six months. That's not a big deal. Yeah, well, look. That's exactly how having a baby works. No, I, I can't hear you on camera, Jesse. So she doesn't. She doesn't agree with my biological. Here's the thing: women are vessels for us. Like, I, it's pretty much the men that, that does everything when having a baby. But I look at these photos. A friend of mine just took these fucking photos, by the way. Yeah, with his wife, and it wasn't for their wedding. Like, they're already married. And they were doing like those type of like, oh, we're by a lake and all that shit photos. I felt so sorry for him that I wanted to reach out and say, oh, my God, your smile on those photos. <laughs> it's is, fake. Is, yeah. is fake. And you hate every fucking second of this. Here's, I'm, I'm OK with being a good Instagram husband. Are you familiar with that term? Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, that means your girl wants to get cool pictures next to whatever. And some weird pose that she can't get by herself. So you take the pictures for her and mm-hmm. then show her, and she doesn't like it. And you do that 70 times until she gets one picture that works. Yeah. Uh, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Because I'm actually doing something. I'm just standing there like a jackass on my, like, Ricky Bobby. I don't know what to do with my hands. I, I, so I'm fine with that. I, when you hire a professional photographer to go and take shots of the two of you, yeah. somebody asked for that, that's, that symposium we spoke at a few weeks ago. They were like, I don't understand why, why this photo. I was like, I don't have any photos of myself. Yeah. I don't want to hire a photographer mm. for me to fucking put a button down on and, and pretend like I care. No, it's it's weird to me. Super like, weird, right? What what's the what's the real point? I mean, if it's if it's for posterity and shit, what's the point of capturing staged moments? I, like that's what I don't. Pull understand. out your phone when something cool's happened. Take yeah. it because we can do that now. Yeah. Take a picture, like grab your fucking wife by the shoulder and fucking take a selfie of yourself, and you'll that'll be there forever. Same thing with concerts, right? I, I don't mind. You want to pop Ooh. off like thirty seconds of a song, a few pictures or whatever, yeah. right? I don't get people who record the whole tape, goddamn thing. Record a whole fucking concert. Yeah. It's like, dude, you're watching the concert. Yeah, you can go on YouTube and watch a much more better quality, better quality fucking, than off on. your off your phone. Yeah. And I told I told a woman that at a show one time. Yeah. Um, I said, hey, after, I mean, it was like eight minutes, right? I think it was 838 was the exact time mm-hmm. code of how long she was filming this concert. And I go, I go, are you going to shoot the whole entire thing? And she kind of looked at me and she was like, me? And I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, you're past the eight minute mark at this point. I was like, I go, just out of curiosity, what are you going to do with that? She was like, I, I, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it later. Nope. And I was like, are you? Do you think you'll watch it later? And she was like, "Well, I, I might upload it to YouTube." And mm-hmm. I was like, "Great, but then are you gonna are you gonna watch that video? Or is that for someone else?" I go, "Were you hired by someone else?" And she got real like, "Oh my god, this you're right. This is really dumb. Why am I doing this?" Um, because if you really think about why you're filming for that long at a concert, you're just like, "That's a, that's I, one I'm of at a concert. That's one of a number of things that we should just cancel on the internet." Like nobody needs to see that. Nobody needs to see unless they're unless you're at some crazy restaurant. Like if you go to Sobelman's in Milwaukee and get one of those bloody mirrors that has a whole fried fucking chicken on top of yeah. it, take a picture of that. But if you just got a <laughs> plate of biscuits and gravy, nobody cares about that shit, dude. <laughs> Come on, man. And if you're not in a fucking like Michelin starred restaurant or something or a James Beard award winning restaurant, don't take pictures of your food. We I have not. Uh, yeah, I I I don't think I've ever taken a picture of my food. I have for sure. If it's cool, food I've made myself. If it's gone, or if it's cool, yeah. It, like if I'm, if I'm, if it's some, you're right. If it's some shocking thing with yeah. like a, a duck's head on top of it, right? Yeah. And you're like, oh fuck, that's amazing. Other than that, look, a steak is a steak, you know. Like I look at yeah. Rogan's Instagram, it, it's just elk meat and jalapenos. <laughs> and I, I look, I'm saying this as a Joe Rogan fan. Yeah. However, his Instagram is simply just pictures of his dog and, and elk meat and jalapenos. Yeah, it's weird. 
Um, it's strange. But he doesn't care about social media. No, I know. But but he he clearly cares enough to take a picture of his food and share mm-hmm. it. And I, besides him, I don't have many people in my life. They're the best food Instagram. There's only one you really need to go to. It's uh, it's actually grill your ass off. Yeah, they're pretty good. They have the best food Instagram I've seen of like meats and all that other yeah. shit. But as far as like stranger like friends and things like that taking pictures of their food, I'm like, God damn it, man. I had a girl who uh, was my assistant in New York mm-hmm. um, for for my MTV show. She fo- and I still follow her to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, she takes pictures of her fucking food all the time. Yeah, and it's sometimes it's just like Shake Shack. If it's you're like, there, there are people. A lot of people don't know this in the regular world, but there are people who work in Hollywood and other production areas, and their job it's called a food stylist. Yeah, and they they literally come on set. If you have food, if it's like a big Hollywood movie or even small ones, mm-hmm. and there's like a Thanksgiving dinner or something, they arrange everything on that table to make it look right. Or if it's a commercial or something like that, and you want the food to look good, they know how to present it and all this other bullshit. That is a real job. If that is your job, then post that picture every single fucking day. Yeah, but if not, don't do it. Oh boy, there's that that gay guy who was with the Kardashians forever, uh, Jonathan. I forget his last name. Mm-hmm. Right, he. I didn't know what he really did. Like, he was kind of like a hairstylist. Jesse always watches that shit. So, like, the Kardashians is on all the time. Um, you know, whenever I get home, I see a Kardashian thing in the yeah. background or a fucking Real Housewives thing. And I'm just like, Oop. sports. Keep on walking. Keep, yeah. Sports or nothing. I'm yeah. getting the fuck out of here. What? Uh, um, or news. Like, I'd rather watch news or something, right? Yeah. So, anyways, th- this guy who I've seen off and on for years of my life at this point, because the Kardashians have been on for 15 years, I think. Uh, I, he was like a gay guy and I couldn't tell if he was trying to fuck him or I, I didn't know what the deal was. Right. And I think he was a, an, or initially a hairdresser. Mm-hmm. He reinvented himself, if you will, as, as a character called the food God on Instagram. And it's just him eating food everywhere. And I'm like, what is it interesting? He has like fucking 2 million followers. No, it's just him eating food in different places. <laughs> But it's like he's a thinner kind of gay guy. And I'm well, like, have you seen the ASMR stuff? Yes. Like a lot of Asian people have full ch- YouTube and Instagram channels, and it's nothing but them with some um, shotgun mic or some like super or hi- hyper cardioid mic near their face, yeah. and they're just eating. The, Wait, and it's the noise. It's supposed to be. I don't know what the fuck it is, from dude. That? I don't know what people do with it. Honestly, is it, it? I don't know. I haven't looked into it enough. Is it a sexual thing, or is it just like something weird that people enjoy? I don't know. Is it like it's listening? Be sexual? Is it like listening to the ocean and it calms you down or some shit? I don't know. I, I but don't, it's fucking, I don't understand it. it to uh, me, it's weird as shit. It's like the fucking food guy. Here's the thing, uh, last bit on this food god thing, right? Anybody who wants to pretend that they're a foodie, yeah. I'm a foodie. So is everybody, motherfucker. Everybody wants to eat. I don't yeah. know anybody who hates. Good food. Yeah, you breathe a lot too. Are you an airy? Shut yeah. the fuck up, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> uh, and with that, if you are the food god, I want to see you fat as fuck, like Guy Fieri, right? Yeah, or the if guy I'm watching a cooking show. Yeah, yeah. I want to see him fatter than shit. Then I know they've they're really eating. This or food. the dude from Man vs. Food after three seasons, he had to stop because he was eating so much. Yeah, he quit. Like, he, he quit because he was going to die. And they had to get another dude in there. Yeah. Um. You know who I'd like to see? What's his name? Andy uh, Dick. Dick. No, the guy from. Uh, <laughs> The guy from uh, Firefest, what, what's his name? Oh, that guy. Yeah, so he's got he's getting a show. By the so way. I want him to have a cooking show, but really it just turns into him making drinks and getting fucked up. So that's what I would like. You're to see. close. He's gonna go. They're, they're shooting a reality show of him right now. Andy King is his name. Andy King. Yeah. Hey, can you do you see these people doing these weird things in the background? Oh, yeah, just here? hey, just casually get them. Yeah. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. This is a bonus episode. You'll uh, you'll literally see what we're talking. We just drove by the park and we're like, "Fuck it, let's pop up here because there's all these fucking weird people doing shit." Um, I kind of we'll think this guy might be into show. it. I think he oh, look is at this. too. Look at this. Yeah, I think oh, he's, no. oh no, 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 dude. no, no, no! Do you see that? Alec? These are gonna look great on Instagrams. Fuck, dude. Oh. It's kind of upsetting me to be honest. I think here's the thing: because I'm married, you're not. Uh, mm. The reason why I'm not, and I'm not shitting on that fact. Maybe you're doing it right, and I'm wrong. Who knows? When you're right, right, like this moment right here, right before you get married, you're willing to do dumb shit like this. Yeah. And then after you get married, you're like, fuck no, we're not. I feel like I would be more prone to do it after, to be honest. Like when I'm, I know that I've, we talk a lot of shit on this show, but when I'm in, I'm all in, dude. Yeah. Like I'm super into the fucking, you've seen me with a girl before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I'm super into it. I think I would probably be into it more afterwards than before. Okay. Like the honeymoon phase to me, you know how my robot brain works. I'm like, this is all just like bullshit right now. Right. Like, yeah, it's great, but. Like this is this isn't the real thing yet. That's why, like, if I was going to start dating a new woman, 
Like, hey, what do you want to go do? I, you know what I want to do? I want to go to a fucking grocery store and buy groceries with you. <laughs> like, honestly, let's go. Let's go shopping for fucking school supplies because that's what our life is. It's it's not <laughs> it's not going to fucking movies and dinners and shit. Our yeah. life is doing stupid bullshit like that all the time. <laughs> I need to see if we can be in that environment and and tolerate and still love each other. Because if not, then what the fuck's the point of all this shit? Maybe you should start with that. Lead I, off in I, these relationships yeah. with that of like, hey, I'm not going to take you to a nice steakhouse tonight. You know what I'm going to take you to? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you uh, right on down to Target, and like the like a super Target, like yeah, one of yeah. the big ones, and say, hey. We're both going to do each of our shopping for the whole week together. Yes. for We'll be here for two hours. Yeah. And then let's see if we, we don't kill each other. Or take them to Ikea. And I, was, I was just going to say, then go to Ikea yeah. right afterwards, and then go home for the next seven hours, set up that, that table that's going to be in your office. Ooh, shit. Can um, you imagine that being a first date, building Ikea furniture together? That should be mandatory for everyone. That'd be the test right there. This is, we've got to get Jared to do this. Or if you're, like, like right before you're going to get married, <laughs> you, you should just say, hey, all right, cool. Let's see how compatible we really are. Go to Ikea, pick out four items. Yeah. And just spend Saturday and Sunday putting those together. Yeah. If you don't want to fucking murk the other person by the end of it, yeah. then you, congratulations, you get a marriage license. Yep. There should be somebody in the room that watches it and is like, all right, yeah, I'm here the whole time, and I will give you this marriage license because I think you're going to work. Attorneys would never allow that to happen because they make too much money off divorces. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a good idea. I was upfront about it with Jesse. I said, look, I can't fucking build anything. Yeah, I am. Besides- but it costs like an extra 50 bucks to get somebody to come in and build it for you. Who cares? Yeah. I, but like I, I'm, I'm never going to build you something. I no. will never fix anything for you. Yeah, I could pay the pay the person to do that. So if you still want to marry me, this is the deal. Yeah, and uh, she was cool with it. I'm the same. I'm not a builder, really. Yeah, I can fix stuff on cars and stuff like that. But as far as around the house building stuff, there's some stuff I can do, but most of it, I'm just like. This is not what I do. Why don't I just pay someone and it's all they do and they can do it? Now, I can cook really well. Yeah. Uh, I, I can grill out like a motherfucker. Like, I feel confident well, in my I, grilling abilities. I can bake, make candy, cakes. I can cook pretty much any kind of food. Like, I've been doing that since I was a teenager, so I'm good at that shit. Uh-huh. But as far as, like, I'm not going to fucking do the, hey, there's a dog taking a shit. You want to grab that right quick? Yeah, there um, you go. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, this is the YouTube video everybody was hoping. I'm for not going to be. Uh, Bros podcast channel. Yeah, it is. I'm not going to be uh, re plumbing our bathroom. It's no a fucking way. And so when I when I told Jesse that, and I was upfront about it before we got married, there's only been a couple times in six years of our wedded bliss that I've caught her under her breath saying, "Well, if you could fucking fix that, that'd be great." And then I'll look at her and say, "Hey, you knew the rules. I told you before we got married." I cannot fix anything. Do you want to respond to any of this? She can't. She can't hear any of that. She can't. She's yeah. just making a face. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I can. I can pay. I can pay somebody to do it. And, yeah, it's uh, easy, right? Yeah. Why not do that? Yeah. Like, we we've we talked about this recently with uh, God. Who was it? I think it was with Donnie. One on that show. Like, if you get outside of your core competency in life, <laughs> yeah, then you're yeah. you're wasting your time. It's true. Just it. It caught your time is valuable. It's the only resource you don't get back. So. Throw away a little money and save that time and stress and all that shit. Yeah, and fucking do something you actually want to do. We got a we have a guy named Miguel who's like the best in the business, and he fi- he does all of our shit, the handiwork, puts everything together. Miguel, he's an uh, Irish American. Yep, um, from Ireland, uh, I believe, right outside of Dublin. Yeah, and uh, anyways, the best smile that I got from a, another human being in the last month was him driving by my house. And he just looked at me and waved. Like, he stopped the car. He waved. Hey, Ross. How are you, man? Fucking great, dude. Because I've probably hired him for 50, yeah, you're, 50 and th- 60 jobs. That's the other part of it. It promotes symbiosis. Like, you're making each other's lives better. Yes. He's doing what he does well and getting paid for it. Yeah. And you're not having to do that bullshit, and it's taking the stress off you. I mean, that's, <laughs> that is a win-win situation. And I remember the interaction so well that I was just like, ah. Damn it, man! This is great. You know, that's the that's the warmest welcome I've gotten, other than my yeah. children, in the last month from another yeah. human. Where I'm like, man, that was that was delightful. What? You know, just another man appreciating another man. Oh, here we go for paying. What's 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 happening? Now, now over they're here? sitting down on the wet, cold ass oh, ground. Oh no! Get a shot of that. that that's knowledge. how you get hemorrhoids, by the way, sitting down on cold things. God damn it. You know, you know, going, that, that dude's butthole is just ruined now. In his mind right now, all he's thinking about is like, man, I'm going to have to get these fucking pants dry cleaned again. Yeah. 
Because uh, when he gets up, it's going to be that wet mud, too. Yeah. And he's going to be like, yeah, he's sitting cross-legged because that's they're how you get that they're shot. Sitting, they're sitting Indian style. Oh, like no, Like two no, children no, in no, second grade no, waiting for no. Miss Robinson to call a fucking school roll. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, Mother of God. Boy. And then when he gets home, he's going to ask for something sexually that's going to be a little bit out of the ordinary. And he's going to say... You know what you know what we went through today, right? What I did yeah. for you in these photos. I'm gonna need whatever that yep. request is. Yeah, because he looks pretty vanilla, but you never know these days. No, he's got a. He looks a little bit freakish. No. Yeah. No, he's he's got a moon face. Reverse cowboy. He might do that Amazon style. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he might do that. We tried to catch one of these ducks earlier, but they're fast. Yeah, really quick, really quick. You kept saying you wanted to, to put it in one of those uh, dog bags. Like a poop bag, like yeah. a poop bag, and then smash it against no, the no, concrete. No, no, no. I just wanted to capture him. I'm not going to smash him against the concrete. Well, were you going to strangle him? I might rip his head off, yeah. Are they lying down? No, they're lying down. Alec, can you get a shot? Are they lying down now? This is the gayest pose oh that any two gosh. human beings can do right here. What is that? The only thing that would make it gay is if what they is put that? their hands under their chin like this. And if you were, by, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, know that there's no towel, there's no yoga mat down. They are on the wet. And now they're flipping leaves at each other. It is 39 degrees right now. Oh, no. Are they flipping leaves at each other? Look, look, dude. (laughs) Oh, we're so playful. This is how our whole relationship is going to be. Oh, I feel. And and here's the thing. By the way, for this couple, in case they happen to stumble upon this, I want to say that I'm not, we're really not making fun of you. We know this is what happens before you get married. All we want is for you to come on the show and. Two years. I, here's what I come on the show in two years and tell me if you were as happy t- today as you were on on this day when you were laying down in the cold, wet leaves. Now, now there's a cold ass down. breeze blowing right after they get it off the wet ground. Stiff hey, breeze. Dude. I just want to say to that couple if they're watching that I am making fun of you. What you're, <laughs> I'm, I'm not. What you're doing is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stu- it's pointless. Oh my God! It's wet though. This and is it's... for my Christmas card. Oh, it's great. Do you have to do? Do you have to have to do uh, Christmas cards as a kid? Ah, uh, yeah. Did you really? Yeah, like my church did it. They, did you they took to church. They took all the photos at the church. So, do you have any of this? Uh, I might be able to find some. Yeah, it'd be I don't great know. for you to post some church yeah. photos for everybody. Yeah. I'll, I'll see if I can find that. Man, I didn't. <laughs> uh, my my family was never into like Christmas photos. We're like, where we all gathered around at like J C Penny or whatever. Yeah. It's because it's fucking stupid. Yeah, we never really did that. We didn't. We didn't really have that much money either to do shit like that. But uh, uh, yeah, we never did it. So I, I don't have like a bunch of those laying around. I've got the stock standard ones from school, right? Where you put a collar on and you know some form of collar, and then you do the thing. Yeah, I didn't really do school pictures. I usually skip that day. Oh, really? I wasn't a big fan of having my picture taken. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because uh, you love it today. I do. You can tell by my expression <laughs> in all the pictures. <laughs> we uh, we tried to, to mix it up with our our. First we did one. we did some weird shit today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, oh no, you, you and I did some weird shit today. But, but uh, Jesse and I tried to mix it up with our first one. We had him wear a Run DMC, an old school mm. Run DMC yeah, yeah. T-shirt for his first school picture. Yeah. So that way, it's like hopefully he looks back on it. And he's like, oh shit, that was pretty cool. Because mm-hmm. I look back on some of mine, and I was just like, I was wearing a Coca-Cola uh, polo. The, the one with the polar bear on the front yeah, of it? Exactly. God damn, dude. Yeah. That's not great. No. And I like I, I wore it, and I, I want to say <coughs> I probably had some say in it at the time, you know, for a school photo. <laughs> but I look back on those, and I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, hard Rock. For whatever reason, yeah, yeah, it was big hard to, uh, like, you were a baller if you, had a, if you had a Hard Rock t-shirt with a different city on it. Yeah, yeah. Or Fiji. It was, it was like Tampa. I was like, oh, <laughs> man, did you go to Tampa? You're like, yeah. Did you spend time at the Hard Rock in Tampa? <laughs> you lucky SOB. Shit, what did you, you have? I wore Planet Hollywood stuff, dude. I was. Did you? Yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> have you ever even been to a Planet Hollywood? I have. It's the worst place on earth. It's, it's, it's so dumb. It's Hard Rockish. Um, Bruce Willis and those guys used to... Uh, just to own all those Schwarzenegger and Stallone, right? St- hey. Ooh. What? Uh, hey. They all went bankrupt. A, there, isn't there a hotel in Vegas where they have like movie prop shit and all the rooms? Yes. So that that's still that is still open and they renovated it. What's the name of that place? Planet Hollywood. Oh, it's the Planet Hollywood Hotel. Yeah. The PH. Yeah. And so um, they renovated it. They have it open, and then Britney Spears had a residency there forever. And so I will say this: they they made a comeback, and the rooms are nice. I stayed in. Um, in a room there i would say maybe a year or two afterwards and mine was the judge dread 
room? I thought you were going to say Judge Judy. No, I wish. Like the robe, the bathrobes are her robe from the show instead? You, there's a gavel on the nightstand. <laughs> you can bash your own balls in with it. Yeah, well. Uh, right. No, I stayed in the, in the Judge uh, Dread room, okay. and it was that was Stallone, obviously. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty dope. Hey. And they had uh, shit from the movie, like clothes. Yeah, so they have the, they have like the, the table mm-hmm. and it has uh like the, it's actually almost like the one that uh homeboy's making for you now the the center of it's cut out and there's stuff in there and there's glass over the top of it so you can yeah. see the props from the movie you can see the props and then they've got something on the wall and like a, a it's like a plexiglass yeah, shadow yeah. box yeah. but like I, I remember having a few drinks one night and then trying to kind of nudge it off the wall to see yeah, yeah. like oh it actually Whoops. like there's the shoe that stallone wore in judge dread right yeah and They've they've really got that those things bolted in. Yeah. Because all I kept thinking to myself was, what's to stop somebody from getting fucked up and taking a hammer to this thing, and then stealing Stallone's shoe from Judge Dredd, or his T-shirt? Is this the same asshole helicopter pilot that was over here earlier? Probably. Probably. There was a helicopter circling <laughs> for what was a good hour uh, for no reason whatsoever. Yeah, it's the same guy. You know, you know a lot about helicopters. What's this? What's this fucking dude's? I don't know sitch? what they're doing, man. I mean, it's got a camera on it, but. Um, oof. What are they doing now? Uh, these two? Yeah. I don't know. I hope that guy falls in the river. Is he close? No, nah, he got past it. Man, and they're they're right here at Magic Hour. So Magic Hour is right when the sun's about to go down. So yeah. that, that's when your your shots look the best. Um, again, I'd like to have this couple on in two years and see if they're still happy. If any of you were out there and you saw this couple and you can identify them, pre- please contact us. No, don't. Don't. That's terrible. I don't want them contacted. Um, no, 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 contact us and let us know who they are and we'll track them. Oh, yeah, 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 for the next two years. Yeah. Let's see how this works out. Y- yeah. What do you mean it's way worse? It's Je- not Jesse's worse. off camera and you said it's way worse. No, I'm going to track them. It's. I'm going to passively track them and then... <laughs> <laughs> Am I going serial killer? Is that what this is? <laughs> Your whole Shit. show, everything. Have you ever tracked somebody? We had a guy on the show who tracked somebody. Remember that? What do you mean? Tra- uh, Tyler um, from uh, Tiny Film. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I remember that, yeah. He just followed somebody in a car for like eight hours. A total stranger, man. Uh, yeah, I used to do that kind of stuff in, uh, in when I worked in private security in California. Really? Yeah. Just to do it? Like if one of my principals, somebody was fucking with them, mm-hmm. one team would protect the principal and somebody would be on the person fucking with them 24 hours a day. No way. Yep. What were they doing? Life shit. Really? Yeah. Um, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's fun. Boring. Mostly boring. But I, I, Was there ever a time where you found something cool where you were like, oh shit, somebody's getting sucked off in a car? Uh, no, just uh, the, I guess the funniest thing was some guy that was uh, trying to sell meth. And I just, I saw him and called the cops and he got busted for meth and I have to worry about him fucking with my principal anymore. Okay. So that was good. Was he trying to sell meth to your, your dude? No, he was trying to sell meth to me. Oh, really? No, no, no. <laughs> no. I, just, I just saw him. He was doing shit like because I've got a shady past. Uh, I wasn't always a cop. <laughs> 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 um, I've got kind of a shady past. So uh, I noticed some stuff he was doing, like he was making stops and stuff. I'm like, this dude's selling drugs for sure. Yeah. So I just saw him like, hey, I think there's a guy selling drugs over here. That's called 911 or whatever, and they fucking arrested him. That's that's amazing. Yeah. I, it's weird that you call 911. I would figure you just call the police station itself, right? Well, I didn't want to be identified. Uh, so if you call 911, you're not identified? From a payphone, no. Oh, you called from a, a payphone? Yeah, this was like 2012 maybe. Shit, I miss those things. I want one in my house. Do you want to sing that song together? I want a payphone, yeah. I'm at a payphone. <laughs> no one knows the words. No, it's Adam Levine. I'm Adam Levine showed up at the Super Bowl last year, if you didn't see it. It was the worst. Ripped his shirt off, and all of a sudden, he's got, like, he's tatted up like a fucking prison inmate. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. He went in one day session. He was like, I want all the tattoos, brother. Yeah. I need to look tough. <laughs> well, you're not tough, Adam. <laughs> You're a fucking retard. Life happened to Adam Levine. Oh yeah, life big time. He's had such a rough life. Yeah, he has. No, he's he's been on these mean streets. He's for, a goddamn for gajillionaire. A yeah, he is. He's so fucking rich that he left The Voice, <laughs> and that was paying him fifteen million a season. And he yeah, he was like, nah, I'm done. I'm good with this. It's too much work. Two hours a day. Yeah, I know. Not for me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta I gotta kick back and unwind yeah. a little bit. I gotta do a little me time. Yeah, now he's down in the keys listening to Jimmy Buffett all day. God damn right he is. A little Jimmy Buffett to eating get shit. cheeseburgers and wings. Yeah. God damn right he is. Uh we got some sponsors to pay for this whole fucking shit wagon to be on the air. 
First and foremost, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Now, if that couple had put down a, a ghost bed out here, right, then I could understand, hey, man, all right, you can lay down on top of the bed and take some photos and, and do all that shit. But they did not do that. Um, but if you're at home and you're thinking about getting some photos uh, on a wet fall day around 38, 39 degrees, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and uh, get on it. Get on it. If you're military or uh, or you happen to be a first responder, you get 15% off forever. Um, and if you're just a regular human like myself, they get a Black Friday deal that will turn you white again. <laughs> <laughs> This guy, this photographer for these people keeps picking stuff off the ground and handing it to him. Like, here, hold hands with this in your hand. It's, I would do it like a big piece of shit. Oh, it's like, here, hold this hold this dog shit. You know what would be funny, though? It's very if, artistic. If you took this setting and then you handed them, like, two like a, two giant dildos. Yeah. And, like, if all of your, your pre-wedding photos yeah. were just you holding dildos laughing with your wife, that'd yeah. be, the, that'd be funny. That, that I would, would do that for sure, yeah. Time. I would absolutely do that. Um, I would do anything weird. I would dress up like 80s rockers. Like, I would fucking wear jean shorts and a tank top and a fucking mullet wig. Mm-hmm. I would absolutely do that. 100%. <laughs> I'll throw a ball out. Of maybe, your maybe, yeah, shirts. maybe have a fucking ball hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next up, we got LukeBelair.com forward slash drinking bros. It's L U C B E L A I R E dot com forward slash drinking bros. It's good booze. The best. The best. I was incorrect. I was like, "Hey, man, it's fifty percent off or whatever it was." I don't. I'm not good at math, obviously. When I checked out, it was like I think it was like thirty percent off. Thirty percent. I know yeah. the bottles were twenty six dollars, though. Yeah, you thought the that the bottle cost more. That was the problem. You were trying to do gorilla math. Well, here's the thing, man. It's so the shit's expe- <laughs> like it's the nicest like What's, bottling labeling of all time. I just have a hard time believing it was twenty six dollars a bottle. What's happening out here? I'm not really sure. Is she just standing in the sunlight? Yeah. Um, uh, you got that? You got that? Can you get the, you can get that woman on camera? Because it's my wife, and she's just shaking around outside, um, in the middle of the shot. Uh, <laughs> 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 we can see you. <laughs> she just goes no. <laughs> no, yeah, we can, but it's it's hilarious. <laughs> The hilarious thing about Jesse is anything under eighty, she is yeah, she's a southern, chilly like we're in fucking Chernobyl. She's a Southern California girl through and through. Yeah. Anyways, LukeBelair dot com forward slash Dringer Bros. Twenty six dollars a bottle. You get thirty percent off with uh, the promo code Dringer Bros. and the in the URL LukeBelair dot com forward slash Dringer Bros. We've been saying this forever, and it's dude, it's one of our baller ass sponsors, man. You're gonna go to people's houses for the holidays. Yep. Just pick up a, and a gifts. case. Yeah. Um, that way you can just drop off a bottle mm-hmm. at, at, at a house. You don't have to fucking worry about going to the store, all that shit. And it, it's like the nicest of all time. When, like when people come over, they're like, God, oh, Jesus Christ, you're living the, yeah. a good life. And I'm like, well, it's $26 Between bottle, Thanksgiving and uh, Christmas, you're probably going to go to, th- well, between Thanksgiving and New Year's, you're probably going to go to, what, three to five parties? Yeah. Or not not necessarily parties, but gatherings at people's houses or yes. whatever the fuck. You're going to burn through this shit. May as well. May as well. Uh, go to LukeBelair.com forward slash Stringer Bros. L-U-C-B-E-L-A-I-R-E dot com forward slash Stringer Bros. Get that booze, brother. Uh, last but not least, uh, Hawthorne, dude. You've been using some Hawthorne. I have, yeah. It's um, good. It's good stuff. The, it's it's it's, it's it's bespoke toiletries, basically. Yeah. It's like Box of Awesome, but only for bathroom shit, so... You go on to take a short quiz and tell them what kind of hair you have, how often you wash it, all that shit, and your skin care routines, um, deodorant, like how you sweat, mm-hmm. what's important to you, is it antiperspirant deodorant or both? Um, if you're like a sweaty person that leaves stains in their clothes because of white deodorants, they'll give you something clear that's also an antiperspirant. I mean, it's, you answer all that shit, and then they send you stuff that's specifically made for your body. Yeah. Basically, it's really not that expensive either. Where is it at? What's the URL for that? Uh, I have no idea. Is it Hawthorne.com? Yeah. Um, for might, is it C-O? It might be a C-O, dude. Let me check right quick. Hawthorne dot, dot, uh, dot C-O. Let me check. Um, yeah, man. I, I, I love their shit. I, I saw you unboxing it the other day, and I was like, oh, man. Because sometimes they'll send a, like, a sample to us, right? And I was jealous because it went to you, and I didn't get to fucking use it. You took it all. And that, that's the dirty fucker that you are. Yeah, it's Hawthorne.co. Yeah, Hawthorne.co. Four slash, is it a forward slash drinking bros or is it the promo code? Forward slash drinking bros. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, that's That shit is nice, dude. Yeah, it is really nice. Um, that's like fucking quality shit there. 
I, I'm a big fan of them at Box of Awesome, dude. Boxofawesome.com is, is yeah, they're is the great. Gym, dude. Promo code Drinker Bros for that shit too. I like it when it's like, hey man, it looks expensive as fuck. It probably is, to be honest with you. Um, but then uh, you get a deal with it, and you're just like, yo, this is the fuck. It seems like general. something that would be super ex- expensive. But here's the here's the thing. It's not with the no, promo codes. Like stuff. everybody is getting. Uh, retail shit is is cyclic, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it takes so much time and effort and and infrastructure to get a single product to a shelf. But if you can buy it from a giant fucking factory somewhere and you cut all that middle shit, it cuts the price down. So people see these cheaper, like, oh, you can get fucking bespoke shampoo for fucking twenty bucks a bottle. Yeah. How is that possible? Well, that's how. It's not shittier stuff. It's just like easier to get to you. Yeah, it's really that simple. Same with the fucking champagne and Luke Blair um, and that rosé, dude. Uh, it's simple. It's simple. We're we're testing this out, man. We're we're like uh, fucking Morgan Freeman and uh, Tim Robbins playing chess out here on a fall evening in Columbus, Ohio. We're just going to throw you a bonus episode just to do it. We're going to go live immediately afterwards and pop this shit up on YouTube and uh, in audio. I'm looking forward to the game tomorrow. I heard it's going to rain, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to rain. It, it started out where it was going to rain some today, and yeah. tomorrow was going to be pretty clear. Yeah. And then it uh, it was like, oh, it's going to rain somewhere like around halftime, so fuck. And it was like, oh, it's going to start raining at like 7 o'clock in the goddamn morning. Like, oh, thanks. We really appreciate it, motherfucker. Man, uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a big one tomorrow. It's going to be a big one. And that Army-Navy game is, is, should be frigid as well. Yeah, that's two weeks. Last year we were up there. This is in Philly at, uh, at the Link. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's brutal. <laughs> I think it was like 17 degrees plus wind last year. Yeah. You and I stayed until about halfway through the second quarter. We're like, fuck this. I, we, we, not, we went through halftime. Um, Did that's, we? that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. we made it through halftime. That's the thing about the Army-Navy game is and then I know Trump got some heat for this because um, he was like, you know, great tradition. Uh, football, you know, not so much. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, he's right. Uh, the, the games are... You know, usually twenty. You're lucky if it's twenty. It's just 14. not. It's it's not the game that we're used to seeing. It's not. It's not like <laughs> they they both run weird offenses. They like, don't throw the ball. Navy runs a triple option, uh, option yeah. and Army only runs the ball. Yeah. Like every now and again, they throw a pass, but they usually don't throw more than like twelve passes a game. That's it, and it's weird to see it because it's like a child's game where you're just <laughs> like, man, because uh, it is know. like Pop Warner because nobody's talented nobody, enough to be the quarterback yet. To throw, yeah. So. I don't know. It's pretty it's funny, weird. but we're we're that tailgate is off the chain. Yeah. Um, the guy who stuffed the Jello shots up his ass. Did he hit you up? Uh, no, but the the guy who had the the EMT or whomever it was that had the fucking nitro gloves. Yeah. Did and said he's bringing nitro gloves again. So if anybody wants to get a Jello shot shoved up their ass, come to the Army Navy game. Come on down. What do you do the rest of that day? Uh, Does that dissolve inside of you? Mm, I mean, you just have sticky butt cheeks, I guess. <laughs> right. But rectally. Do you take that vodka, you know, right to the right to the? I mean, I, I imagine if he actually got it up in there, it fucked him up pretty good. I would say so, yeah. right? I saw him later on. He seemed pretty fucked up. Well, we were all pretty fucked up. Yeah, I mean, we were, we were fucking. Yeesh. Every time we go to Philly, we get fucked up. It's one of those towns, man, where everybody just wants to drink, and I don't know it why. Sucks. <laughs> Philly sucks, dude. <laughs> I don't mind Philly actually. Uh, the way they're they've, I, I'd say what because I went back in the day when I was a kid. And it was real sh- rough down there. It was shit. It smells like pee everywhere. I don't. Well, look, uh, half the cities do now because yeah. nobody nobody cares anymore. But um, uh, it's better now. Like I feel, you feel safer downtown when you're just like, all right, cool, man. Yeah, I don't think it's unsafe at all. I like, I don't get that feeling. It used to be back in the day. Yeah, for like, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm not fucking. And West Philadelphia, there. especially when you were born and raised, obviously on the playground is uh, it's where I spent most of my days. So yeah, that was bad. But yeah. now it does seem relatively safe. We have some friends that are cops up there. We have some friends across the border there in South Jersey that are cops as well. They seem like they're doing all right. That girl is up there. What's her name? I don't remember. Marie? T- Tina Marie? Uh, Tina, yeah. She, or Tiffany, yeah. Tiffany, Tiffany Marie. Marie. That's it, yeah, yeah. She's, uh, I think she's uh, been dating another cop for like a year now, so they're doing all really? right. Really? Yeah. I was yeah. going to suggest that you date her, but. Um, she's been on the prowl for a while. Yeah. Find, found her a nice man, man piece. What's that? Are you allowed to, to sleep with other people in the police force? Is that a thing? Um, I think as long as they're not in your chain of command, like you, if they were your commander, I don't know how it works. Actually, I've never been a police officer before. I wonder, man. I doubt it. I, I assume it's right? the same rules as the military. Like if somebody's in the, in the upper echelon, you're not allowed to date them. 
Yeah, because I mean, otherwise you'd just be fucking in the car all day. But she's a detective. She's a detective, so Ah. I think the rules are different. She's not like a beat cop or anything. Yeah, there's a lot of cool people there. Hal is uh, he's he's he works in South Jersey. He's a cop over there. This is the guy that wears the kilt everywhere. Yeah, that guy's fucking. Um, I didn't know he was a cop. Yeah. Or, yeah, he, that or mother, he was deputy, wearing maybe. He was I don't wearing remember. a kilt. Oh, it was like fucking freezing out Man, there. Yeah, it was crazy. I don't. He his balls must have like he showed us. He showed us his dick and balls. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah. I was really really drunk. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of that whole situation, we're going to be at uh, Stateside Vodka the night before. Yeah, on Friday night. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to get Freddie Mitchell to come out and hang out with us that night. I'd like to. Well, we got a special <laughs> guest. I'm not going to say who it is, but it's very important, and uh, that'll be. A banger of a show. Yeah. So if you're in Philly, coming to that one. I mean, it's I'd a like long get, ass show. Too. I'd like to get Freddie out for uh, the tailgate. Yes. I think, I think he he would really flourish out there. The people of Philadelphia love Freddie Mitchell. Yes, they do. He is a fan favorite. Yeah. He's one of the best in the biz. That yeah. guy. Um, I fucking love him, man. Yeah, he's a good dude. We like hanging out with him. Is this your first time here, by <clears> the way? <throat> I know you graduated from Penn State. In Columbus. Yeah. Yeah. Is it really? Yep. So you haven't been to the stadium? Nope. No shit. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, dog. I'm probably only going to spend about 10 minutes in there because it's, it's going to start dumping and Ohio State's going to be up by 40 by, you know. God, I hope so. The middle of the fucking second quarter, so I'm going to leave. Nothing would make me happier than Ohio State up by 80 and we leave at halftime. Um, yeah, for all because, the reasons. For all the reasons. One, well, one, your team wins, and two, we can get the fuck out of that shit show. Yeah, because it's going to, if, if it is going to rain like it's supposed to. Like I guarantee if it's a blowout, everybody's leaving. Yeah. Uh, but I will say this. Um, luckily, the, it, lo- it looks like the weather pattern shifted a little bit, so the tailgate will be fine tomorrow. Okay. So if you're coming out tomorrow to the tailgate, um, the live show at Richard Denoff's, you'll be fine. We'll be fine for that. It'll be a little chilly, but uh, Richard makes these mason jars full of moonshine. Yep. I don't know if that's legal or not. I don't really care. Um, but I just know that I love them, and I can promise you that'll keep you warm all morning long. My goal tomorrow is to sneak an entire mason jar still in the jar. Of mm-hmm. moonshine into the game. You're gonna keister it. I'm not gonna keister it. So here's the thing, because obviously having gone to school here, I know kind of what what it's like in the pat downs and all that yep. shit. Um, it's one of those things to me where when you're layered, that layered, you know, yeah. people kind of give you a pat, but it's just like, dude, they're not they're not really giving you hard checks. I mean, you, know? you could really just go camelback under the under the layers. You could, but I want to get a picture of of me holding a bottle of moonshine yeah. inside Ohio Stadium. That would be awesome because that we we always had challenges like that. Um, yeah, uh, one of my buddies wanted he wanted his dad's ashes dumped out mm-hmm. on the field, um, but you have to win the game to to do that. Like, and it had to have been a big game. So there was a uh, was it there was a Ohio State Michigan game. It was forty two to thirty nine, and the winner got to go to the national championship. Right. And we won, and we got to go to the national championship. Stormed the field, and then he that's when he did it. So he waited years to storm yeah. the field and get his dad's ashes on the field um i did it at the chicago cubs state i did it wrigley mm-hmm. I, I poured some of my uh, dad's ashes out around there yeah um, i put them on the field there but i waited till the game was over i went down kind of to, to where the bullpen was dumped them and then got the fuck out of there and i told somebody about it later and i said hey what were you do? The guy was like, "What were you doing?" I was like, "I oh, dumping out ashes." And uh, he goes, "Oh man, a buddy of mine works. He's one of the grounds crew." And he yeah. goes, "Do you know how many people do that?" Oh, at Wrigley, I imagine it's a lot. I never, I never thought people would just people in Chicago take the Cubs very seriously. I, yeah, yeah, I, I figured. I mean, but it's been there for a hundred and fucking what fifteen years or some shit now. Something, yeah, something. I just <laughs> didn't know it was that prevalent where they were like, "Man, it happens like every game." And I was like, "Oh shit." Yeah. All right. Well. I just like to be sweeping, and then boom. Yeah, you know, all that's going on. Dust. Yeah, I've been selling my ashes, <laughs> so I burn little parts of me. Yeah, a little bit here and there, and I just give it away to people. Like, hey, do you want to dump my ashes out somewhere? Do you want a piece go. of me? Yeah, I give them like a little Ziploc <laughs> bag full of my ash. Like, I just cut off a toe or something. What are you going to do with yours? What's your instructions? My ashes? Yeah, I don't have instructions, dude. At just, all? If when I die, just throw me in the trash, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's from It's Always Sunny, but I agree with it. It's like a, a, so dead, a whole, dead whole body. Yeah, a dead body. It's just garbage. <laughs> like, what do you? What, what else are you supposed to do with it? I'm not really a nostalgic person. No shit. Just throw that. Just. <laughs> I don't get the point, man. I don't. Could you imagine if some cops came over and they're like, "Hey, man, what are you doing?" Ah, oh, it's my dead buddy. He just wanted to be thrown in a trash can. You get it, right? And then you have to show them the paperwork. Yeah. Like, 
Here's the death certificate. Says that I can do it. So here's the will. Like, like in the beautiful, serene park that we're in. Imagine just dragging your body out and then just dumping it in, Throw the, it in, in the, the river. trash can. Yeah, yeah, right with all those, <laughs> those ducks are right in front of the people with the wedding yeah. photos, and then it's just it's your fucking body just floating mm. in a pond. Last wishes. Yep. Last, last wishes. wishes. You get it. Just keep screaming it out. You get it, right? But you get it, right? And, and no, it's like no, you don't. Um, I think I want to. I, I don't know if I want like the Hunter S. Thompson treatment where you're getting blown out of a cannon. That, yeah, that would be all right, I guess. I, I I'm not. Eh. <coughs> I think someplace personal, and then that's about it. But it's definitely cremation. I don't. Want, I don't want to be buried. Really, I mean, that's, I don't it's too much money. Uh, it's, it's too much money. It's weird too. It's just like, all right, sweet, your bones are underground. I yeah. might have my head frozen like Walt Disney, and then burn the rest of me. No, I want to keep my <clears> dick and balls too. I want that to be. My, my wife is off camera. Will you put my dick and balls in a formaldehyde jar and then put those on the uh, the mantle? No. Nope. Um, she said. You're, she said yes. Is I uh, want whoever you remarry, I want them to see that every day on the mantle. And my children, obviously, I want them, my sons, to have something to aspire to. It's just going to be brethren. My, my brethren. <laughs> and, it's, it. and all you have to do is just take a mason jar, some formaldehyde, put my dick and balls in there, and then just write on a piece of scotch tape with a you know yeah. a black marker, my brethren. Yeah. You know, Ross's brethren. And I think people would understand. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a nice thing. That's not a bad plan, to be honest. When I was in college, that was somebody asked me this question, and I said, I wanted a a full formaldehyde, like a tank that Houdini used to, you know, try to get the fucking handcuffs and shit out of. I wanted that, but formaldehyde, a full bar built behind me, a drink. Obviously, it's going to be full because it's formaldehyde, right? So, like a martini glass you could see through, dirty martini style. And then I would want to, to pay two other like dead prostitutes like wait till two other dead prostitutes die yeah. and then put them in there as well because <coughs> i wanted the scene to be filled up yeah yeah no sure like i wanted people around me at the bar enjoy like having a good time as well yeah so it's art yes yeah i got it and i wanted my mouth sewn up like i was smiling like enjoying myself yeah, like and the, them too like the joker yeah and then the whole point of this was that i think whoever the prostitutes family were yeah, they would rather have the money than to bury their prostitute family members. Yeah, they probably don't even know she's dead, anyways. No, so right. who cares? Yeah, it's Here's, gotta... you know, you've got me thinking now, actually, and I believe I've got a plan. Uh, so I want you and Jared. So I die today, right? Uh-huh. For the next week, you and Jared have to do stuff with my body, like weekends at Bernie me. Okay. Uh, stand on a bridge and throw my body at cars that are coming by. <laughs> oh God! And then like keep. Yeah, you have to keep sewing me back up or whatever the fuck. Because I'm <laughs> yeah. dead. I don't give a shit. Duct tape? Yeah, so then put me in like a wheelchair, duct tape me to it, and roll it down a hill. like <laughs> <laughs> Roll it down like one of those hills in uh, in San Francisco and just let me plow into the front of a car. Oh, like, oh, uh, sorry, guys, my what's, buddy. What's the crookedest street in the world? Lombard it, Street. Yeah, that's yeah. it. We go down Lombard. It's yeah. just like, oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, you just go tumbling down. Just do weird shit like that with my body for a week, and then a funeral pyre. I'd like to put you up on uh, blades, like on a pair of blades. Blades, um, like roller blades. Yeah. Okay. I call them blades, obviously. Cause yeah, because you're cool. You're, life. you're so cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what I would do is put you on roller blades, and then uh, put a stick, like holding up your back. Yeah, yeah. And then another set of wheels behind you, so that way you could just be going down like a trike on roller blades, like a yeah. tricycle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, a, like a, a trike. Yeah. You just going downhill on a pair of roller blades yeah. would be. Fucking hilarious! It would be me. really funny, and then it, just to see you get smoked by like a like a Mack truck or something, <laughs> yeah. like, be the best. <laughs> that would be the best. Dude. I mean, if you if you were able to completely liquefy my body in some kind of high speed impact, then you could save the time of having to burn me at all. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, because that takes time. It does, and who's got time for that bullshit? I don't. No, I don't have time for that at all. No. Um, but yeah, you got you. You have my word. We'll do that. Good. We'll do that. I've already. I you know I've made that bet with Jared where I get to keep his skull. Yeah, make a, a, a glass a, out a of mug it. Out yeah, of a mug, it. yeah. Um, and I think that's the way it should be. <laughs> like you could, whoever your group of friends is at home, they should be able to fuck with your body. Yeah, and then have your their fucking skulls. Yeah, as mugs. So like, if you're the last one left out of your five, let's say you have five close friends, right? Yeah. And then you're like, dude, I'm drinking out of my four friends. That's enough for the week, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that would be a nice thing. Yeah, and it's a constant reminder that death is coming for you. <laughs> Which is something I like. <laughs> you could just be 
drinking out of. Yeah. Um, this is the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week. Since we're doing just a weird, fucked up show in the middle of a park in Columbus, um, I'm going to give it to this. There was a gay guy that used to live over here. You were talking about this area being, uh, be- before we got out, you were like, there's a lot of rainbow flags and stuff. This was a this was a big gay area back in the day. Yeah, that's good, though, because they have the best restaurants oh, yeah, always. Oh, yeah, 100%. All the shit's clean. That's why there's the no fucking crime. park is so goddamn yeah. nice. Like, gays, like, I haven't seen a single better, piece of dude. trash on this fucking ground anywhere. It's gorgeous. And um, <coughs> the first, my so my first jaunt down here was... Um, my buddy was going to a club, and he was just like, hey, man, uh, I want to pick up some drugs, mm-hmm. right? Um, the gays also have drugs. The best drugs. Yeah. The best drugs. And so <laughs> he was like, I was like, uh, what do you want to get? And he's like, oh, man, I'm going to stop by and, and get some cocaine at this this dude's house. Yeah. And uh, so we, we come down here, and uh, the guy had it literally open the door, and it was a full-on raging party going on. Yeah. So it wasn't like a dirty probably, like back alley. Probably middle of the day, too, right? What no, but it was it? early at night. It was like yeah. 7 p.m. at night. Where yeah, they don't like, fuck around. That's that's a little early to be doing coke to me on uh, a, yeah on a Friday, right? Because that's usually a it's 10 p.m. plus yep. for something like that. And uh, I'm not a big coke guy, so mm. I didn't really care. Uh, but we he opened the door and was you know and he was like, oh, where's the guy with the drugs? And he was like, mm. he was serving it off of a uh, a star a Star Trek replica of the ship, mm. you know, because it was flat on top. Yeah. yeah. And a bunch of gay dudes were just ripping lines. That's pretty um, funny. Off of this thing, and I was just like, "Shit, man!" Um, and that's when I knew. And they like, so I go in. There's full fucking shark cheateries. Mm-hmm. Uh, the best wine on the planet. The best drug. Everything yeah. there is. And that was the first time in my life I was like, "Oh my god, dude!" Gay people fucking do it better, and they yeah. just they rage harder than. You and I could ever think about. They care about the shit in life that actually matters, like doing cool shit and eating good food and all that stuff. They're not. They're not worried about. They're not worried about getting offended by things or anything like that. They're just like, yeah, whatever. We're gonna suck each other's dicks and eat some cheese. And that was the only time I gave it a hard thought of like, (laughs) "Eh, maybe I should be gay because this seems pretty, pretty fucking. Unfortunately, I don't think you can just make yourself gay. You can't. You can't make yourself gay. But I looked around at all these dudes, shirtless, raging doing coke, yeah. eating the finest foods and drinking the finest wines. <laughs> and all I kept thinking was they're just going to fuck each other and then just keep partying. Like they yeah. have nowhere else to it's, be or go. Or It'll make great. you jealous for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, why I think a lot of people, I, Joe Rogan used to say this. He, he thinks that uh, some people are so homophobic because they're afraid that they would like that lifestyle too much. Mm. Like they secretly love the taste of dicks. You maybe, know what I mean? Maybe. I don't know, but either way, that was the first like eye-opening experience at like a like a gay part, and I was like, "Oh shit, dude!" Yeah. And it was like two blocks over from here. Yeah. Um, oh, good for him yeah. for opening your eyes. I thought I thought we would just, and I don't know his fucking name, man. I, he had something. He had something they they called him, you know, like the fucking star worshiper or whatever, like something cool like yeah. that, where you're just like, ah, oh. it's he had like a really cool drug dealer name, where yeah. you're just like, ah, oh, Ponce, like it was Ponce or something, you know. <laughs> and I was like, oh, is that? De Leon, yeah. are you were a fan of the Fountain, the Fountain of Youth. Yeah, like, yeah. Why was your name Ponce? He's from Florida originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, what? What's the significance of that? Something cool like that. But uh, either way, um, look that that goes to you, and that'll that'll conclude uh, this Friday night weird fucked up show. Yeah. We literally were just driving around and just pulled over in a park and said, "Happen to have all the equipment? Fuck yeah. it, let's do a show, and just we'll pop it up as a fucking boner episode." Yeah. You know, boned up. Um, we just boned hard. We boned real hard, man. Yeah. Um, and then tomorrow morning, bright and early, uh, we'll be setting up at 7 a.m., doing the show around 8, 8-ish, 8.30, and uh, getting fucked up tomorrow. So join us if you're in the Columbus, Ohio area. If you're uh, drinking bros, Ohio, or Kentucky, you can come on up from Kentucky. Bring some Everclear with you, because I don't think we can get it here still so, in Ohio. But uh, join us. <laughs> join us for some fun. I know at least one guy's bringing White Claws already. Is he really? Yeah. I think Richard is bringing some Zima too, man. Nice. Yeah, well, they took it. They fucking took it off the shelves. It's done again. Yeah, it's done now. Um, so I'm I'm excited to have a Zima. Sad days. Really kick my legs up over my head. Spread Eagle Jack and yeah. uh, get into this game tomorrow. Let's do it. Uh, for those of you who are listening at home, I, I don't know if this was fun or weird, but uh, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can check out the people who were getting wedding photos <laughs> in the background. <laughs> of this fucking thing for D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway. I'm Ross Patterson. We're the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.